Good morning, good morning. We want to thank God so much for this new day. This is Monday, the beginning of a new week, and we are very grateful to God because God has always been faithful to us. God has always made his masses new every morning. If there is any day and any season that we are grateful for every new day that the Lord gives us, for the gift of life, the gift of good health, and the peace of mind, it is this season. We have learned. We have taken so much for granted. Even waking up healthy and alive, we don't take it for granted. And therefore, my brother and sister, we thank God together for the gift of the new day. And brethren, it is important to rejoice and to be glad in the Lord. Because the Bible says that um, we must rejoice, we must be glad because of the things that the Lord does for us. And therefore, I welcome you as we share the word of God this morning, even as we pick up the, the, the devotion of the day, you are welcome and may the Lord bless you. Let us pray together as we receive the word of God. Heavenly Father, we are grateful. We are grateful because of your grace and mercies. We are grateful because of your goodness. We are grateful because of your care. We are grateful because of the gift of life. And as we pick up the word this wonderful morning, the very word that is the light of our feet and this life in our lives, we pray that, Lord, you may be able to shine this light of your gospel among us, that we may be able, by your grace, to overcome every manner of darkness, and we may be able to appropriate the true grace of your salvation even in, the, in our lives. And bless us in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Brethren, now we are uh, in a new season. This month, you know, we uh, mentioned last week that this is the month that we are talking about issues of salvation. This is the month after we have gone through the season of uh, Easter and being able to understand the, the, the truth of the, of, the, of the work of the cross, the work of Jesus Christ, and the work of finished work of the cross that brought us redemption, that was able to become a place of our reconciliation with our God, a place that we found the forgiveness of our sins, and the praise that we found, the lachiousness of God. And therefore, it becomes the greatest gift to man, the token of love to man by God. And it became the praise of our redemption. And for that reason, brethren, we pick it up now, breaking it down to understand in depth and what is this salvation. Last week, you remember, we were dealing with the, 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 the basics, and this is the foundational basis, the foundational base of salvation. In other words, the doctrine of soteriology. We were asking ourselves, and what is this foundational understanding, biblical foundational of understanding the, the, the doctrine of salvation? And we are grateful to God that we are able to come up with uh, issues to understand, and I know that we did it, and also our brother Levin Moses also was able to deal with it uh, even further, even in depth. And now this morning, we come now to another, uh, another, another level of being able now, have, after understanding the basis of salvation, after understanding this gift of salvation, and understanding what God had planned and what is God's desire, and where our salvation uh, is emanates, then how do we receive this salvation? This week, we are dealing about how do we obtain the salvation of our God. And therefore, I want to come up with um, uh, six uh, areas of steps I can be able, there are steps of obtaining God's salvation. And these six steps that I'll be bringing to you, because I'll bring two this morning, tomorrow I'll bring another two, and on Wednesday I'll bring another two, so that we may be able to find time to think about them in depth, so that at least we may be able to understand. And therefore, my brother and sister, welcome, even as we uh, walk together, and understanding the steps on how we obtain as the salvation of God that is given through the love of Christ, even the death of Jesus Christ on the cross. Now, let me mention this. When you talk about the six steps, that does not mean that salvation is like acquired, like the way we have other religions like Islam. You remember Islam have different pillars and all this stuff. By the way, it's good to understand the salvation of God, the salvation that is given through our Lord Jesus Christ, is about believing in Jesus Christ as the one who is the Son of God who died for our sins and his work on the cross was able to pay our debt 
and by faith we appropriate God by salvation. And therefore, by the way, I would want to let you know, it is not something that I want to bring to you that is like salvation is something that is a journey you take. No, salvation is just simple. It is believing in the Lord Jesus Christ as the Savior of the world and accepting that we are sinners. And then we find by faith the salvation of Christ. And therefore, that's why you see that that, uh, that, uh, that, uh, that uh, uh, thief that was uh, crucified with Jesus. The other one just said, you remember, you said you're a son of God. Why don't you save yourself and save us? And it was like a mockery. And you know the other one says, no, no, no. You know we are here and we are justified to be punished because we are robbers. But this man has done no evil. But he turned to Jesus and told him, Master Jesus, when you come back with your kingdom, please remember me. And amazingly at that hour, Jesus declared salvation and redemption. And he told him, where the hearts and the souls of the men who are large years go, even in paradise, your soul will be there this evening. In other words, by the grace of God, salvation is by faith. Salvation is by faith in our Lord Jesus Christ, believing that we are sinners and accept. However, there are truths, which I'm quoting steps, there are truths that we must understand and we must be able to accept them and be able to be willing to move and to take the steps or the stairs, let me call them the stairs, that we may be able to fully be able to understand and accept, and not only that, but obtain the salvation of God. Number one, one of the important stairs and steps that I'm talking about is about acknowledgement. And you know, when you talk about acknowledgement, it is acknowledgement is another word of admitting. And what we do, the first step is to admit that we are sinners. We have fallen short of the glory of God. We don't even deserve to be men and women that inherit the kingdom. Because the Bible says that the soul that sinned shall die. But you know the first step is to admit and accept that we are sinners. Because you know what? Until you accept that you have a challenge, you cannot look for help. Remember the two men that I've mentioned that were, that were robbers and who are uh, thieves that were uh, crucified with Jesus. One of them, you can imagine, he could not even at that particular time budge or even humble himself. He was still puffed up and continued to mock Jesus as how others were mocking him. Even in the point of death, an amazing, I've seen men who even struggle, even with the sickness, even to the bed of death, and they cannot even budge and accept that they are sinners and they need the help of God and the help of Jesus to be born again. And it is very devastating to see men waste away and die before they give their life to Jesus Christ. Because you know what it happened? You realize that they go to eternal condemnation. And I want to ask us, brethren, it is important to understand that one of the most important wisdom about finding salvation and help, even help of any other manner, is to admit that we have weaknesses, we have a deficit, even some people struggle with issues just because they don't want to accept that they need help. But it's important to admit that I am weak here and I need help. And this is what we are supposed to. We must accept that we are sinners and we have fallen short of the glory of God. And therefore we just need someone who can be able to make us light. Let me lead to you a very important verse in the book of Romans chapter 3 and verses 23. And this is what the Bible says. For all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. And all are justified freely by his grace through the redemption that came by Jesus Christ. You know, brethren, it is important to understand that all have sinned. And that admission that we are sinners, it causes us to desire the one who can be able to save. And you know what? Who can be able to save is no one another. Salvation is not found in no, in no any other person. It's only by Jesus. That's why Paul says this, because we can only be justified freely by his grace through the redemption that came from our Lord Jesus Christ. When we mentioned redemption, you remember last week we talked about redemption. And redemption we said that it is good, it's good to realize that Jesus paid our debt. Jesus paid our debt. He redeemed us. Because already we were slaves of the enemy and of the judgment of sin. But he paid a cost so that we may be able to be bought back and be able to be restored even to our God. And you know that cost? It cost him 
his life and the blood of Jesus on the cross. And therefore, my brothers and sisters, it's good to understand when we are the meat of our sins and accept that we need help. And the only one who can help us, as Paul reminds us, is he that gave his life on the cross. And therefore, through the grace of God, we are able now to be able to turn to Jesus who is able to save us because he's the one who died for our sins. Stair number two. Stair number two, or the second step, is the step of repentance. Is the step of repentance. Now, let me mention this. You know, when we talk about repentance, it's what we call penitence. Now, penitence is being sorry. You know, you know, you know being sorry about the things that we have done, being sorry about our sins, being sorry about our mistakes, being sorry about our wickedness, being sorry about our, our wayward, wayward ways, being sorry about the things that are filthy and the things that are unacceptable and the things that we do that are not in line with the will of God. Now, when we talk about penitence and when we talk about being sorry or repentance, I'm also reminded of the world that we are living in. Do you know we are in a life and in a world of justification? Men justify everything. Men are used now even to justify sin. You realize that even when we are cornered and pushed to the corner, because of the things that we have done, we are not willing to be sorry. We are willing every time to justify. Do you know that is the seed? And that is the seed that started from the Garden of Eden. When Adam and Eve fell and God appeared into the, into the garden, at the, at the time that he used to visit them, amazingly they ran away and they hid. When they hid, God called and said, where are you? And then they came and he asked him, did you, Kwani, you did what I told you not to do. And you remember Adam came and you know what he did? Instead of being penitent of the mistake of disobedience, he started blaming the wife. He said, it is the woman that you gave that did ABCD. Amazingly, Eve also was not willing to budge. He also blamed it on the serpent. And you know, I think God realized that he cannot continue with the chain. And you know why? That's why punishment came. I wish they were just sorry and were willing to repent. And this is what the Bible says in the book of Acts. In the book of Acts, and uh, when we read in the book of Acts, chapter, chapter 23, in the book of Acts, chapter 3 and verses 19, in the book of Acts, let me read verse, uh, chapter 3 and verses, um, and verses 19. This is what the Bible says. The Bible says, in the book of Acts chapter 3 and verses 19, the Bible says, Repent then and turn to God so that your sins may be wiped away, that time of refreshing may come from the Lord. I want to remind us, brethren, it is important to learn by God's grace that when we repent and we are solely about our sins, when we are penitent, penitent about our sins, amazingly, we are able to find God's forgiveness. Because what we just need not to justify, it is not just to say that we did this because of these, or by, by the way, I did this because of these, it is me who did this because of these. No, it is important when we accept and admit our sins. Then the second step is, is to repent, to repent heartily, repent sincerely. It is good to realize that sin, the penalty of sin is death. And by the way, if we just get to understand it's not only death, but eternal condemnation, then we should not in any way court any manner of sin. We should not justify any manner of sin because we also know that the penalty of sin is bad, is grievous, eternal condemnation. Therefore, it should draw us into true repentance. And now when we go to true repentance, do you know what we find? We find godly freshness. And that's why the, act, the book of Acts is saying, repent all of you. And when you repent of your sin, the season and time of refreshing is coming. Do you know what happens, brethren, when we repent of our sins? We receive a time of God's refreshment, a time of God's visitation. Our sins are forgiven. And when our sins are forgiven, we find the peace and fellowship with God. We find eternal life. Because when we repent of our sins and receive and, for, and repent of our sins, we also find the grace of God. May the Lord bless you this morning as we continue to find the grace by God's grace to accept, to acknowledge our sins. And the second step, repent of our sins sincerely and with a penitent heart. And God is faithful. You know what the Bible says? For he is just and faithful to forgive all our sins. 
that he is just and faithful. If we confess of our sins, if we repent of our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive all our sins. May the Lord bless us even as we continue to learn and to accept, to admit and also to repent of our sins that we may receive life and also our salvation of God and life eternal. In the name of the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen.